What is up guys, this is Hart with Horror's Corner for today's taming video. We're going to talk about this giant, giant turtle. Weird looking. It is a weird looking turtle. Look at that face. Kind of reminds me of, uh, of the Goonies a little bit. That's kind of what I'm thinking of. Like I'm waiting for a hey you guys thing coming out of this. Anywho, this is the Mega Shalom, the giant sea turtle, the one that you can practically build a base on. And we're going to talk about taming it and what it can do. All right, so this is the Mega Golan, and this is gigantic. This thing rivals a Bronto in size. It's it's definitely substantially wider, pretty much just bigger in general. This is big, big dude, six-legged turtle with a lot of really neat abilities. So it is super slow. Just to be honest, just so we're clear, this thing um, is, is slow if you're on the land, if you're on water, it is slow. So we got that out of the way. The attacks, it has a bite attack, which will actually harvest berries and thatching wood. Um, we can check back the inventory. It actually ha harvests pretty well, actually, uh, in the ocean biome. You can either kind of come up on the beaches or if you're in another biome, do that. But you can also harvest the, uh, like the seaweed and plant life that's underneath the water and actually get it that way, too which is really where this thing thrives. It has some amazing stats. Um, and this is just a level one. These are level one stats we're looking at. The health is decent. The carry weight alone is 2,500 with a level one, uh, which is pretty intense. You can easily get a high level one of these. Uh, well, maybe not easily get it, but once you get a high level, you can definitely build a base on top of these. This whole thing allows you to build structures on top of it. This is not a, I mean, it's based off a platform saddle. You need to put, make the saddle ride it, but that whole shell is actually buildable area, which kind of be, ends up being like a nine by nine foundation, but not really a full nine by nine because you have this, because it, the shell tapers off in the back. So really you're getting like nine up here and then you know, of course, you know, maybe two all the way back here. So. Still, though, gives you some awesome opportunities. Build height. You're only going to be able to build three levels high off the top of this. Um, you can sink foundations on this like you would a normal raft. And if you're not familiar with that, we have a one-on-one -on -one as far as sinking foundations goes. But uh, you can sink the foundations and get a little bit more height. If you sink them too low, you risk losing them, basically. It's going to mess it all up. Uh, it seats multiple people. They'll actually seat here on the little bleacher looking things. I'm not quite sure how that's supposed to... I mean, there's like no seatbelt. It's very unsafe. Very unsafe. Welcome to Ark. Very unsafe. Um, they can ride with you as well. So multiple people, you can build basically a small <laughs> base on top of this. So yeah, you can definitely build a pretty substantial base. Now these things do add up to the carry weight on the carry weight of the actual me mega shalon itself. So it definitely caters to getting bigger ones and uh, higher level ones and or breeding them, which they are breedable. Uh, they lay eggs which is a whole nother mess. So another awesome feature about this guy is the bubble breath attack that we see down at the bottom. This is an alternate fire and it does have a charge so you can't sit there and do it all day long. Um, what it will do is create bubble streams that come out in front of it, like so. And things caught in that bubble stream will have a bubble full followed around it and be lifted to the top of the water. Now, small fish all the way up to about the size of angler fish will actually reach the top and actually die sometimes. Uh, but bigger stuff is going to be kind of ignoring this stuff. It's not, it, they're not going to care. They'll float to the top and then they'll come right back down again and come after you. But I mean, it's a nice little escape method if you're deeper in the ocean and you're trying to get stuff out of your way. The bite attack is really only in front of it. So you have to watch things getting up underneath of you and or behind you. So this is this guy isn't really a, a huge fighter. This is a hauler with some cool special abilities. The other thing to note is this: these bubbles that are coming off the top of me, I can actually dismount and I'm not wearing scuba gear right now. And I can sit around these bubbles and my oxygen doesn't go down. So you can actually use this for scuba diving without scuba gear, which is pretty gnarly because that way you don't have to waste uh, the scuba armor if you don't have to. Uh, it ascends and descends fairly quickly, but it just doesn't move fast. This is, the, I mean, this is slow. This is a really slow, very, very slow, slow. This is like the Quetzal of the ocean slow, like this. It, saddens me that it's this slow it's a huge drawback but uh, i mean being able to harvest uh, being able to haul as much as it can being able to have a base on its back now the other cool thing this guy will paddle if it's not yet 
It hasn't done yet, but it will passively... Oh, good. Didn't hit Binio. It will passively create rare mushrooms and rare flowers and some seeds while it's actually just hanging out above water. While it's poking out like this. And over time, you will actually start to see foliage grow up, like bushes and grass start to sprout up from the back of it. And it seems to be dependent on how long it's above water and how many rare mushrooms and rare flowers and seeds it's produced in its inventory. I can't really get a set time with it. And I don't, and I've played around with the server settings a little bit just to see if it had, if there was anything that changed that a little bit. At first I thought maybe if you increase the rate of which crops grow, maybe that would change it a little bit, but it doesn't seem to. It just seems to be over time, you'll start to see grass, grass sprout up from the shell so long as it's above water. Um, the other thing to note is if you start taking all those flowers and rare mushrooms and stuff off its inventory, you'll start to see all the foliage go away too. So it looks cool, but it's kind of a, just a notifier that, hey, it's got rare flowers and mushrooms on its inventory, which is really essential, really. Um, it's a nice, easy way to get a lot of them. And over time, if you just leave it alone, it'll produce quite a lot. So that is another cool ability that this guy has. It gets a lot of perks, even though it's so slow. Oh, these little birds will kind of follow you around. These will just hang out with you. Just kind of aesthetics. They'll just kind of do their thing, fly around. This seems to be a thing with a turtle. That's just how that happens. Uh, breeding these guys. <laughs> breeding these guys can suck. Uh, breeding these guys can suck really bad. So these guys have to breed way down at the bottom of the ocean way down i mean like where all the nasty stuff is down and you'll notice because if you start to enable mating on them it'll tell you that it requires to be in, it requires deeper water to mate so they got to be in crazy bottom of the ocean ocean depth level to breed and when they do the egg will pop out and the egg will have to hatch in extremely cold temperature i tried having the egg stacked up to multiple acs that didn't work i had to go all the way down to the bottom of the ocean right where i bred them and hatch the egg down there too now once the egg is hatched you could cryopod the baby and bring the baby back up to land and, and have it full grown there that'll work um, but the initial breeding part can be a real big pain with these guys uh, for sure the trade-off is that you're getting you could potentially get an imprinted version of one of these, which is going to give you a, a even more weight, even more stats, which is good. I like it. I have one. We have one on our PV server, and I was actually able to breed them, and uh, I I think it's awesome. I think it's super fun um, because it can hold so much. If you know the right places to spawn in other biomes that have the good resources, you can always teleport there, harvest the resources, throw it on top of the turtle, and then you know teleport back to wherever your house was, which is kind of what I talked about in in our last video about. When you teleport to certain places, if your base is nearby that location, you can just dump your resources off. So that kind of counters the fact that this guy is so uh, slow, damn slow. God, he's so slow. Just heartbreakingly slow. But yeah. All right, so those are pretty much the key essentials. The saddle is... Let's go back and... Saddle is unlocked at level 45. You'll actually make the saddle on a smithy. It requires cement to paste fiber, hide metal, shell fragments, and silica pearls. All these probably look familiar with the exception of shell fragments. This is kind of evil. So you need shell fragments to make the saddle for the turtle. And the only way to get shell fragments is off the bodies of dead giant turtles. So you find some, find some low level ones, kill them off, and harvest them with either a hatchet or a pickaxe. And you'll start to see... Um, Shell fragments, if you've advanced high enough and have access to a chainsaw, use a chainsaw on them. You will get a lot of shell fragments. So shell fragments are what you're going to need. Um, they can also be used as a form of uh, keratin. They can be used as keratin, but it's also used to make one of the smaller ocean platforms, the wooden one. So you'll need that for that too. So yeah, he's going to provide you the resources one way or the other for that. Taming these guys. Hmm. If you aren't, you might not, you might not like this at all. You might not. Might not like it. So, let me put some flippers on. So, if you're solo taming this, I already feel how bad for you because this is a very big pain in the butt. So, these turtles, and we just saw one that was over here. Is he still over here? I think he was over here. We're going to go over here and see if we can find him real quick. Ah, here we go. So, we got one right here. Just chilling. Sharks, see so here's the kicker. They're a weird tame and while you're in the process of taming them, they can't be hit or the taming meter resets. Sharks will aggressively go after these guys. 
So if you're not well suited as far as your equipment goes and the stuff that you have, this can be very tricky. Um, I would highly advise you have multiple people. One to watch, there's a whirlpool down there. I'm gonna get sucked into that. Um, I would highly advise having multiple people. One to maybe start the taming process and the other one to watch for sharks. The taming process for these. In the ocean, you will see small little schools of fish. They kind of remind me of the swarms that hang out in the bog. Uh, they're called like parakeet fish schools or something like that. But if you if they target you, they'll say like a microbe swarm is targeting you. Uh, so we're going to try to find one. Basically what happens is we want to find one of those swarms. We want to lead that swarm up to the turtle. We want to grapple hook to the turtle. Pull the microbe, microbe swarm into us and have the turtle eat the microbe swarm. That will have the that will enable the taming meter to start going up, and that's actually how you tame these guys. So let's go find us one of these swarms real quick. All right, so this is one of the micro swarms. They'll just look like this, and as you get closer, they'll start to come after you. I'm waiting for it to say that I'm being targeted. They should start to come after me. Oh god, yep, they're coming after me. All right, so. It should see, we should see a notice. It should say you're being targeted by a microbe swarm up in here. Either way, you want them to follow you. And as you get closer, now you can be on a team and lead these things to you, but keep in mind they move very slow. So you're gonna have to kind of work with them. This is, this is a very, this is definitely a lesson in patience. So we get this to follow us and we need to bring them back to this other, cause that's, that's the wild turtle there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. For whatever reason, my little notification isn't coming up saying I'm being targeted. Normally, you'll see that just as you would see. Oh, God, here they go. Normally, you'll see that little targeting bar come up just like you would in the swarm of the swarms in the bog. Anyway, it's getting closer and closer and closer. And at this point, we want to grapple hook to this thing. This will pull the swarm into us. And we want to get as far inside of this turtle as we possibly can. I want this microbe swarm to come off but as you can see microbe swarm is substantially slower than the turtle so this can be a grueling annoying little process now the other part about this while i'm trying to lead this swarm over here is what were they doing what are they, what are they doing oh god um a that they move really slow b coal fish saber tooth salmon those fish will try to come especially saber tooth salmon those fish will try to come after these guys while you're come, while you're taming the turtle too. So you have a lot of environmental variables that you got to play around with, and you want to pay close attention to all that stuff. Again, this is highly not advised to do this solo. You want to have a fairly big group of people, or at least a couple, to help you out with this to run interference. All right, so we're starting to see the taming meter go up. We finally got the fish attached, and basically we can kind of just sit here and ride this out. The problem is, is that if this guy wanders anywhere near the um, the sharks, the sharks are going to come after me as well. That is not good. We don't want sharks coming after us. I don't really see the tame meter going back up. At any rate, you'll see the tame meter. I don't know why it's not displaying, but you'll see the tame meter go up, and it'll take its sweet time. But once it does, it'll actually be tamed. And that's how this works. Now, we're going to disconnect to show you. As of right now, there is an easier way to solo tame this. If you notice the fish are going after the turtle, once you've instigated that, go outside of render range. It's definitely a exploit as far as taming this stuff goes, and it looks like it's still working right now. I tried this in another single player, and apparently it still does work as of today. Uh, but what we do is we come out of, we need to be out of render. I don't want to see that turtle. We need to be completely out of render. So when a creature is out of render, they go into stasis and everything outside of that render goes into stasis as well. What doesn't go into stasis is the taming meter. The taming meter will still increase over time. So basically what you can do if you don't have any other options is to do what we just did. Attract the fish to you, pull them in as soon as the taming process starts on the turtle, all last outside of render area. Once you do that, and this will take a little bit of time, but once you do that, this guy will eventually tame by itself. You can be outside of render range while this is going on. 
I don't know if this was, I, I would assume this wasn't done on purpose. It'd be kind of silly if it was done on purpose, but um, yeah. So we'll be right back. This method is kind of silly. So basically what you do is you just sit here in your tribe log and check your tribe log periodically and it will tell you when it's tamed. Alrighty, we've been kind of wandering around waiting for this thing to tame, and I believe it actually did. Yep, see, we went down at the bottom, we tamed a level 7, so it was actually pretty low level, but we got standard things on here. Where did we I think it was? That's level 7, that's her. So let's put a saddle on her, and let's jump on it. There we go. Alright. So this method, like I said, it's kind of an exploit if you're solo taming it. Um, but even if you're not, if you're doing it with a group of people, which is probably a little bit easier. And to be honest with you, it's going to be a bit more fun and, and, a, and a little bit easier. Um, because finding those microbes can be kind of a pain in the butt. What I would recommend is at least two people, maybe even three. Uh, one person to find the microbes and kind of pull them to the turtle. And two, to really guard the turtle, taking out anything that even comes remotely close. So maybe having a couple on megalodons or even the sources that are actually prone to hanging out in shallow environments might be a very helpful way to do things. Um, harpoons, anything that you guys can use, crossbows under the water, whatever, whatever it takes, it's going to be easier. Now, I have seen some people say box the turtle in, like build somehow, wait for it to get to more shallow environments and box it in with like dino gates or something like that. It seems to me, and at least with my experiences, when that happens and you, is there, is there a duck? There's a duck riding around on a turtle. Check that out. Me, uh, what did he, what did he jump off? He did. They're free rides, dude. Anyway, but it's definitely important to have multiple people. It's going to make taming this a lot, a lot easier. But that's the Mega Shalon. Mega Shalon. Am I actually pronouncing one of these right? I feel like I might be. The giant turtle that you can make a mobile base on. So all in all, I like it. it I think it's... I understand why it's slow because it has so many other things going for it and even though um, it's not a heavy hitter it's melee damage is actually pretty good it's so slow give me a little bit more speed like obviously that would be my gripe other than that no real no real concern no real complaints with it I like that it can harvest all the stuff the reeds and stuff underwater and grab um and grab actual berries from those too I think that's pretty neat the crazy weight, the you know, the animations of it actually growing plant life on the back of it as it gets tamed, I think is really neat. Or as it you know, as it sits out there for longer, I think that's really cool. Uh, and again, the sculpt looks awesome. It's, it's definitely a little weird, but I, I really enjoy it. I really like it. Uh, when we started seeing the trailer for Genesis, we saw this guy coming out, and I'm like, man, I gotta have one of these. That is it, guys. That's it. Which is all we wanted to talk about. We want to talk about talk about the Mega Shalon, how to tame it, how to breed it, its cool abilities, and. All the little nickname, all the little ins and outs of it. If you find this video helpful, please throw me a like, throw me a subscribe, throw me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. And if there's other creatures that you want to see taming done specifically with, let me know. I don't know why I'm running really slow. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys. Thanks for watching. Be on the lookout this weekend. We got another build video coming out this weekend. Feel free to follow me here. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. We're going to be Twitch streaming Friday nights, Saturday nights which will mean tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern and then also uh, tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern at the least. But follow me on Twitter because I always try to update if we do impromptu streams or update new videos. I always try to put it out there too. As always, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Until next time.